I think one of the interesting things that I find in my day is that we all say certain things we think we want, we say we want, but the fact of the matter is, do we really want what we think we want or what we say we want? In other words, I love the idea of God. I mean, don't get me wrong. I believe in God and I believe in Jesus and, you know, I'm a born again Christian and, you know, I know the Lord, but don't you find that a lot of times you want your own idea about who God is? You want your own concept of how God operates? Don't you really sit down and think at times, maybe I'm creating an image of God as opposed to what God says or what God means? Or even how God operates. Now, maybe you don't do those kinds of thoughts like I do. But you see, I like to sit down and think about it. I like to go, hmm, you know, kind of pull an Arsenio Hall. One of those thought processes where I kind of like to ask myself, am I really in the faith? Or am I just creating my own faith? Have I somehow found myself faithful to God? Or faithful to my own ideas about God. Because you see, there are lots of religions out there. And there are lots of people that are more faithful than I am. Matter of fact, if I looked around, I could find people all over the place that, quite frankly, do a better job of Christianity than I do. You know, the Mormons, I mean, they look good. They seem good. They act good. So, they must be good. Because after all, they do a better job of Christianity than I do. But are they Christian? And really, no, I don't think so. Now, they're good people, don't get me wrong, and I'm impressed with how good they are. But that's really not the point, is it? It's kind of like not really the issue. And that's kind of what I find, is that a lot of times people talk a good story, but do they really live out what they say they are? Do they really do what they claim to be. Now, I don't know about you, but that's kind of where it gets confusing to me because there are lots of people who say all kinds of things to me all the time. You know, they'll tell me about their their job, you know, and quite frankly, I'm kind of interested in people with their jobs. You know, people have all kinds of interesting jobs. You know, a plumber has his job, he'll tell me about plumbing. You know, a carpenter has his job and he'll tell me about his carpentry or you know, a craftsman who's been in the field working, you know, day and night learning a trade. As a tradesman, he'll tell me his trade or what he's accumulated as far as his skill set's concerned. And that's kind of what I'm interested in sometimes because those are the people that I they can tell me what they've learned and what they've appreciated over the years. But you know, one of the things that gets a little confusing about kind of this Christianity is that a lot of times people talk about kind of religion more than what they live out, what they do every day. Now, I'm more interested in the people that live out what they say. You know, we all have ideas. You know, we all, we all like to say, well, this is what I want to be, but this isn't who I am. You know, what I do every day is a little different than what I show on Sunday. You know, you know what it's like. I mean, come on now, let's get real. When you get up in the morning, what do you really like? Are you like this kind of like coffee freak, you know, where you got to run and hurry up and get your coffee before you have a good attitude? Wow, okay. But I'm not really that way. You see, I kind of jump up and the first thing I want to do is I want to jump on a video. boat. <laughs> really, that's me. That's my wife. That's what we do. <laughs> it's like, well, okay, you know, guy's a nut, you know, go send, stick him in the shower, you know. Phew, good thing that, you know, video boats don't smell. Hmm. Ooh, ooh, maybe I should. But no, the point being is this. A lot of us say every day we want to read our Bible. Or we say we want to be a better person. Or we say we want to know God. Or we want to meet God. Or if only God would reveal himself, then I would believe. No, you wouldn't. I used to have this argument with people all the time. People would tell me, and I'd do it on the internet, and then I'd meet him in person, or, you know, I'd meet him in person and, you know, tell him on the internet. <laughs> One way or another, we're going to talk about it, so that's what we do. 
So I would, you know, ask them, I'd say, well, you know, what if God would reveal himself, you know, would you believe? And they'd say, yes. I said, no, you won't. I said, no, you won't. No, you won't. I said, God will demonstrate himself to you in some way in your life, because that's what Romans says. But the point being is that I would take that, you know, and God and I would have this, these adventures. Now, I call them adventures in faith, you know, where I would go out and demonstrate, frankly, to myself, you know, to no one else. And it wasn't really that interested in the person getting saved, although it was important to them, you know, I'm sure. And it was probably important to God and all the angels of heaven. But for me, it was like, uh-uh, I want to prove if God's real or not. So I was kind of like, eh, you know, Lord, you know, it's good for me. But, you know, what about other people? What, what's this evangelism thing, you know? I mean, because I kind of got saved over by Greg Laurie's church, you know, and he's all out there, you know, doing his thing. But. I kind of went, yeah, it's not me. So I would ask people, I'd say, well, argue with them and have discussions and say, um, if God revealed himself, would you? And they'd say, well, of course I would. I said, not me, man. I said, you, you know, you'll, you'll hear it, just like the prophet said in the Old Testament. You'll hear it, you'll see it, but you won't believe it. And a lot of the times, that's what we learned about the children of Israel in the desert. You know, is that They saw it. Matter of fact, they lived it. They went through it. But that doesn't mean they practiced it or they did it even after having seen the miracles even after having experienced the deliverance even after having experienced revival i mean let's get real let's throw out some words for you revival miracles deliverance you know walking through the desert being provided for having a pillar of fire by day and a, or a cloud of smoke by day and a pillar of fire by night the real presence of god in the midst of you, you're telling me, you know, that you would believe if you had that? No, you wouldn't. You see, Jesus said the same thing. He said something about this guy that went to hell, you know, and he says, you know, the guy was in hell, you know, and the you know, other guy was in heaven, you know, and he says, well, send my, send someone back from the dead, you know, to warn them. And Jesus says, look, even if someone were to raise themselves from the dead, even if someone was to come from hell itself, people aren't going to believe. And that's the fact of the reality of what I look at in my own life sometimes because I want to make everything personal and real to my life. The fact that someone rises from the dead doesn't mean that people are going to believe. Just because God reveals himself doesn't mean that people are going to believe. As a matter of fact, most of the time people believe what they want to believe. So that's where I like to put this idea of what I want on the cross. Because really, I don't know what's good for me, and I don't know what I really want, because once I get it, sometimes I find out that's not what I wanted anyways. So I'm kind of like really torn between this idea of what we say we want and then what we live out, what is true you know, about our faith. So I'm always interested in what people talk about, but I'm more interested in what people walk about, you know. Kind of like this idea in Australia, they used to have a whole thing about this walkabout, you know, you, you walked about. Well, Jesus, when he had his disciples, they were like walkabout, talk about. Seriously. They would walk about the land, talking about what they were learning. And that's what they did. They walked about and talked about. That's kind of why Vidibo takes to the streets, you know, we like to talk about what we walk about, you know, and really kind of like get it out there so we know what we're really talking about. Because Anyone can sit down with a Bible and create this beautiful image of who you think you are. You know, you could put on a suit, you could put on a tie, you know, you can look good, you can smile on Sunday morning, you can worship, you can do, you know, the Sunday school thing, you know, you could be faithful and true, you know, you could do your duty. And then on Monday, what are you doing? You know, on Tuesday, what are you doing? On Wednesday, what are you doing? Well, Wednesday, you know, that's kind of a church day, right? Thursday, Friday, you know, you know the routine. You know, you look good in front of the people. But what do you do when you're all alone? What happens when God alone reveals to you alone that he alone is God? Oh my God. Shocking, isn't it? What happens if God is real? Huh? Ooh. What happens if you have one of those kinds of experiences? What happens if you decide for yourself without anybody else influencing you? without anybody else telling you any kind of story, that you're going to sit down and have a one-to-one, heart-to-heart -heart with God. Uh, okay. And what if he does reveal himself to you? Will you believe that? Isn't <laughs> that the truth? No, you won't. Because <laughs> I'll be straight with you, Dan. 
Let's get real. You know, you want what you want when you want it. You know, come on now. You know, you, 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 you kind of like being taking it easy. You kind of like getting away with what you can. You kind of like being in charge. You know, you kind of like having and doing your own thing. All of us do. And that's the truth. The reality of God is there. I mean, everybody knows it. Come on now, be real. There's no atheists out there. That's stupid. There's no scientist that doesn't believe in God. You know, they just want to create something more that they can put their stock and trade into, hoping that maybe they were wrong because they knew God at one time. And that's what Romans says, that every person in their life has known God at some point in time. They just changed the image of the incorruptible God and the image of the corruptible man. So if you want to waste your time in apologetics, go ahead. You can argue it till the cows come home. But the truth is, underneath it all, down where the rubber meets the road, where the guts, you know, kind of like have to chew up that meat, you know, that you ate, that the steak looked so good. Well, by the time you're putting it in your body, guess what? It's kind of mush. <laughs> and that's what happens to a lot of theology and a lot of ideas about people have about God. It's kind of mush until, you know, you finally get into the reality of life. You know, where, oh, 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 my son died. <gasps> Where'd your faith go? Oh, 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 my wife died. Oh, wow. Guess what? Where did your relationship with God go? You know, I mean, did it fly out the window? Or did you live it out? Because now you found out what the reality of your life is about. That's where you kind of put stock and trade in what people have gone through. You see, until you've been there, you don't know what you're going to say or do until you go through it. And that's kind of what God does with us. He's kind of like, yeah, I appreciate you being, you know, nice and wonderful, you know, and putting on your religious trappings, you know, and you kind of put on your Sunday morning best, you know, and you come and you show yourself, you know, with the rest, you know, and you're like, oh boy, as long as we're all together, we're all happy campers. But you know, when you find yourself alone, suffering, when you find yourself destitute, without any way of encouragement, you know, say you find yourself without a Bible, kind of like I'm wandering around right now outside without a Bible. Oh, sure, I got a computer, but hey, that's just to record. I'm not using it for references. Do you have any faith inside? Do you have anything that you know you can cling to with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Can you reach out without having an iPad or iPod or, you know, i sticking in your earies, you know, to hear some music? Do you hear the song of creation in everything around you? Can you see God in your day? Do you know God in your way? Do you have Jesus with you? Or is he just an idea? That's what I like. I like to find people who have said, hey, without a Bible, hey, without a guitar, without all my accoutrements, without all my coffee, without any other thing, oh Lord, in the morning, Will I cry out to thee? O oh Lord, in the morning, will I look up and find thee? O oh Lord, in the morning, do I rejoice in you? O oh Lord, my God, in the midst of this, thy people, will I find joy in the morning? I mean, that's kind of not just why we memorize, but we're supposed to put in front of our eyes those things that God has inspired us with. Do you look at and see in creation his handiwork? Do you realize that God right now could peel back the heavens and say, okay, come on home. You know, Enoch it. You know, I mean, that's what I'm looking for. I mean, I don't know about you, but, you know, personally, I'm not waiting for the rapture. I want to Enoch it. You know, I want to just be so close to God every day that God might just say, you know, no more waiting. Come on home. You know, come on, come on up. Up here. I want, I want you to see something. I want you to check it out from my point of view. I want you to come up higher. Come up here and take a look around. I want to see it from a higher point of view. So, I don't know about you, but you know, I'm kind of tired of this, like, you know, playing around with all the, you know, things that are laying around, you know, because people are always picking up some old book, you know, and telling me, oh, well, you know, the saints were like either smart or stupid. I mean, uh, you always get that, you know, you always get this idea that some other guy with their personal relationship with the Lord, you know, either was, a genius, or he was like an idiot, you know, I mean, uh, or like, you know, when somebody tells you about, you know, well, these people did this, and they didn't do that, and they were like this, and they were like that, 
what do you like? You know, what do you do in the morning? What are you first things thinking about? What's on your mind? You know, what's in your heart? Because that's really where the fact of your faith is, or the fact of your relationship is, or the fact of your religion is. Because I see everybody get up every day, and everybody has their own way of getting up, and their own way of dealing with things. And some people, like me, are morning people, you know, we kind of, kind of happy to be alive, you know, we're kind of like, hey, it's cool, thanks Lord, you know, that's great. What do you want me to do today? <laughs> you know, you want me to go out and enjoy it? Okay. Hey God, now that I'm here, you got anything for me? You know, and I kind of, I kind of make my day a little different. I'm kind of watching for and looking for a little signpost, you know, along the way, like, hey, go this way or go that way. I'm looking for and kind of watching for, you know, like little, little things that God and I have between each other. You know, it's like God will send me a little hummingbird or he'll send me a little butterfly or he'll send me sometimes a caterpillar, you know, I mean, bullfrog, who knows, you know, some days it's one thing, some days another. But no, I mean, God every day brings to me some token, some expression, some way of his day being for me to be unveiled before me, to see what it is that he has in store for me personally. Not for you, not for, you know, anybody else, because, you know, it's kind of like your job, you know. You know how you, you got a job, you got to go, you know, you got to go and you got to do. I mean, that you know, let's be real. You know, if you got a job, you got to go, you got to do. I mean, if you don't, guess what? You don't do, you don't get. So there you go. One way or another, you know, if you don't do it, you don't get it. So guess what? You don't got it. Oh, well, that's the way it works. But you see, there's also this idea that if you know that, if you know that you got to do these things, then you do them. So you do them because you get something for it. Well, if my faith was it real about getting something from God? If God didn't actually visit me every day, if he didn't speak to me every day, if he didn't talk to me, I wouldn't walk with him. Matter of fact, I wouldn't have anything to do with him. That's kind of why I'm a Christian. You know, it's like, hey, there are a lot of people that are religious and they call themselves Christians or, you know, maybe they're whatever they got, you know, and they're happy with it. Knock yourself out. Enjoy it. But for me, it's like, you know what? If God didn't answer me, I wouldn't talk to him. <laughs> I'm that way. Yeah, that's me, man. You, know, I'm all, you, know, you don't talk to me, I don't talk to you. Fine, go away. You know, and I've been that way with God. You know, and God's treated me the same way. <laughs> you don't talk to me, I ain't talking to you. And we've had this relationship all my life. And I've enjoyed that because that's real. That's something I can say, hey, you can tell me what the Bible says. You can tell me what religion says. You can tell me your interpretation and how you read it and how you you know discuss it. And I can argue with you about doctrines and dogmas and hermeneutics and homiletics and trash and this and that and the other thing and take it from that perspective and that perspective and that perspective and you know we can play around. But really, who cares? Because that's not what you do when you go home at night. That's not what you do when you find yourself, you know, in the the troubling situations or the joyful situations. That's not the way you live your day every day, is it? The reality of how you live your day every day is what God can see because he's always watching. So I want to know, are you talking a good talk? Are you settling in to just like believing you're a Christian? Do you have faith in the fact that you're a Christian? Or do you really have, you know, I mean, come on now. Let's be real. I'm talking to you. Yes, I'm talking to you. You, not me. You. Are you really getting to know God more daily? Are you really getting to know Jesus more daily? Or are you just getting to know this feeling, nothing more than feeling, you know, every day that you have? You know, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. I mean, that's okay. You know, if you're a feeling kind of Christian, hey, touchy feely, hey, nice. <laughs> it feels good. I got the Holy Spirit. You know, I mean, kind of like, oh, well, let me build my faith up by having, you know, gifts of tongues, and, oh, I'm going to encourage by the, you know, go ahead and pray. You know, I have to get tongues. I'm not going to pray in front of you. I don't want to. <laughs> don't care to. Don't want to hear you repeat me. <laughs> uh-uh. But my point is this. Do you have personal time? Do you have the reality of God? Have you pursued in an Enoch kind of way, going after God alone?
for God's sake. Not for your sake, but for his sake. Are you pursuing Jesus with your faith? Are you going after knowing him more so than you have so in the past so? No? So, uh-oh. Dare I say, maybe today, harden not your heart, as it says in the provocation, if you hear his voice. Because, you see, there's something that God said that really you got to kind of grab a hold of. If he said it, he meant it. It doesn't mean that, you know, it's a metaphor or simile. It's not, it's not that kind of thing. It means that if God spoke to you, God spoke to you. There's no doubt about it. God spoke to me direct. So all my life I'm telling people that and they think I'm nuts. Like, oh, fine, I don't care. You think that is, you know, some voice in your head? Great. For you, it's a voice in the head. <laughs> Good luck with that one. You know, when you get to heaven, tell them all, tell them it was a voice in your head, God, and that, you know, you're not responsible for accountable for the words that you heard. That ought to be interesting. Imagine telling, imagine Moses telling God, I'm sorry, God, but I didn't do it because I just thought it was a voice in my head. God saying, okay, that's fine. You might get locked up or locked in, not where you think, and it ain't in the Huskow or the, you know, mental institute. Hell is full of people locked up, locked in, and locked down. <laughs> Ooh, not exactly the best kind of place to be. But you see, when you are honest with that reality, when you are truthful about yourself, when you're willing to say, you know, I admit it, you know, I, you know, I know there's Jesus, I know there's religions, I know there's all this other junk, but, you know, I haven't really taken the time to prove it to myself. Then do it. What are you going to lose? You know, I mean, we know, I know, I'm being straight with you, you know, this is Biddy Bo, you know, we talk, you know, we have honesty and truth. I know that once you find out there is a God, you know, God speaks to you and you're going to be shocked, you know, it ain't going to make a difference because frankly, it's still your choice. Even after you know there is a God and God speaks to you, you're going to go, ah, yeah, unless you force me, I ain't going to do it. And that's the truth. Most people aren't going to do it. When you're told to do something, you don't want to do it. And that's the truth. You know, God may say something to you and you don't want to do it. You're not going to do it. It's like, hey, forget that. And God will honor that. You know, say, fine, you know, it's, you know, truth and consequence, man. I mean, you know, here we go, you know, cause and effect. You get what you say. You know, you say what you got. You got what you say. You say you don't believe in God. Fine. You don't believe in God. Good. Guess what? When God says, you know, now tell me again. You're going to say, well, okay, here I am in heaven. Uh, I believe. Okay, good. Everybody believes now. Go to hell. Okay, oops. But when you finally get that determination to make it real or make it phony, you know, whatever you're going to do, you really aren't going to get there, you know, because you can't do what you think you can on your own. You really can't. I mean, you say you want to be good, you say you want to do this, you make all these deals, you know, with yourself and with God, and, you know, you kind of, well, oh, God, I just do this, I get this, you know, and then you go, oh, God, I didn't do it, oh, yeah. And you go through the whole mercy thing and the whole forgiveness thing, you know, and the whole God protects you, God takes care of you, God provides, and God does this, and God and that, right? But the bottom line is, hey, if you're sitting here today looking at what I'm looking at, you know, like a computer screen, if you're sitting here talking like I'm talking, you know, you're, you're being real. You know, you're saying, I want to prove it to myself. Then sooner or later, you're going to prove that God is real. Then you're going to try to demonstrate to yourself that God is real, that he answers prayer or he answers you or he, he cares about you. So you're going to go out of your way to prove that he doesn't, you know, and you're going to try to examine this thing called grace and mercy and forgiveness. You know, you're going to play this game, but don't risk an eternity to figure all that out. Get real with God today. Stand before him in your honesty and say, I want to know. I want to know if this Jesus is real. I want to know if Jesus can make a difference in my life. I want to know if I can be different, not just act different, not just contend or pretend or have some outward expression when nothing, nothing inside has changed. I want to know if you can change the inside as much as I know you can change the outside. Because anybody can look good on the outside. But really, it's what's on the inside that counts, doesn't it? And that's what I'm trying to say is, today, 
don't let people talk you into a good story. Because I know a lot of people that, you know, hey, frankly, you know, they go to church. You know, most of the people I know, you know, they, they go to church, you know. And I deal with a lot of church people, you know. It's cool. And I deal with a lot of street people. And that's cool. I deal with a lot of people that don't believe in God. I deal with people that believe in God. I deal with a lot of people on the internet, and boy, when you got cyber personalities, you always want to make yourself look better than you are, you know. But the reality of what people are, are people. And Jesus knew that people are people. He said, look, I know you got this story, you know, and you, you always want to follow, you know, the best kind of like story. You know, you always want to see the happy ending. And, you know, if you're in the West, you know, you always like Western culture stories because everything that we write about in the West is like, you know, the white hat, you know, and the black hat, you know, and the good guy wins in the end, you know, and you've got always, you know, the antagonist and the protagonist and all these things going on, you know, in the story, a good story, you know, to make it interesting, you know, and it provokes your emotions, you know, it makes you feel good, you know, and you want to see some kind of conclusion to the story. Well, that's kind of what, why, and what we do with video. We want to see, you know, a happy ending, you know. I don't want to hear and see, you know, that somehow, you know, I didn't tell you about Jesus or I didn't, like, you know, you didn't have a chance to get to figure it out. But, you know, once you have figured it out, then it's really still up to you what you do. Because bottom line is, everything that you go through really has God's fingerprints on it. God is doing something with you today. He's choosing to use your circumstances and your present life in order to cause something to happen. He wants to reveal himself to you because... He sent his Holy Spirit in this world to do something, to prove that, first of all, there is truth. Second of all, Jesus is real. And third of all, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> but you already know that one. So he's really coming to show you something that you can be different, you could act different, you could live different. You could experience something that goes beyond what you can see, touch, and feel. And guess what? Yes, you can see God. Yes, you can know God. Yes, you can have fellowship with God. In Jesus, you can. Because, you see, if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. and You're not going to understand that. Eventually, you will. But it takes time. So, some of the things that people say, you know, it may not make much sense. But, then again, when God told you and spoke to you the first time, and you know he did. You know somewhere in your life God has been talking to you all along, you know. And you just went, nah, that's not God. You know, and then you tried to tell yourself it wasn't, and you tried to convince yourself it wasn't, and you tried to make up stories that it wasn't, and you tried to go on and on and on that it's not. You know it was. <laughs> to be real, it was. You know. But the bottom line is that when you were still, you know, kind of like testing out to see if this God thing was real, and you figured out, oops, and then you decided to go off on your tangent to create your own God, you know, you, you kind of went, that was different. And you stuck with it for a little while. Can I give you a hint? Check it out. Get real with God and tell him what you're feeling. Because he already knows. What you're dealing with is really someone who cares more than you care. Someone who loves more than you love. And someone who has already proven that love. Because you're going to find that... The father that Jesus was talking about is a whole lot different than what uh, most people in religion, no matter whether it's Christianity, Protestant, or you know, Catholic, or whatever you kind of get into, you know, non-denominational, dominational, fundamentalist, you know, evangelical, you know, whatever you want to get into. Jesus movement, you know, Jesus freak, you know, it doesn't matter. Jewish, you know, wait, wait, you know, God, speaks. we already know that. <laughs> Guess what? We're just not listening. We don't want to listen. We're on our own God. But my point is this. No matter what you're into, no matter what you're trying to prove or what you're trying to demonstrate, check it out. Have a heart to heart. Then, hey, once you have, once you've done your due diligence, once you've proven to yourself, yep, it's still there. Then, at least you know this, beyond any shadow of a doubt, you can't deny that God is real. You can pretend to everyone else that God didn't answer you. You can contend with everyone else that God didn't speak to you. But between you and I, 
Come on now. Get real. I mean, no offense to you, but I'm kind of looking for that Enochian way, you know. I'm kind of like going, you know what? I don't care about all the religious excuses. I don't care about all the ideas. I don't care about all the little games people play, you know, because those are fun. I mean, you know, I like to play games, you know, don't you? <laughs> I like to argue, don't you? I mean, I like to argue with people. That's a fun thing to do, you know. I mean, if you're like, wow, you know that? You know this? Well, it's cool. Let's, let's debate it. And people do that because they're bored. But I found out something interesting about being bored. It all depends on what your goal is, whether you're bored. You see, I do have a goal, and I have a an idea that my sci-fi fantasy is nothing compared to the reality of what God is. I think that God is the ultimate sci-fi experience. I think that I could do something more than what Christians are doing now. I think we can experience something more than what God said we could do. Okay, maybe God already said we could do. So God said that, hey, wait a minute. If you want to, come up here. Check it out from my point of view. And I want to take today and say, hey, you know, God, let's go check out something that you're doing and what you're seeing. And I want to look at it from your perspective, because I kind of like this idea of like, you know, tripping out in the heavens, you know, to look back down on the earth. I kind of like this idea of like, you know, kind of like you know, existing in a eternal state, you know, kind of like, wow, let's kind of go for, you know, like outside of time or maybe interdimensional realities that are beyond the, you know, circumferential, circumferential uh, didactic reasoning that we have within our own parameters of, you know, I can't even think of a way to put it into kind of like a box so that we can say it and then expand the box. But the point being is this. If it so be that we are eternal beings and that we can have something more than what we are, and maybe, you know, we're not talking cults, so don't get me wrong, we're talking Christianity, so then if we are, and God wants us to be more like him, then why are we settling for less? Wouldn't we, shouldn't we be, like, pursuing more? I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm not like God said to be less, do less, and become less. I think Jesus wanted us to do more, become more, and go for more. And that's where I'm at today. I don't know about you, but I want to be like Jesus more so, so that I can know so the fact of what he said so, that we could be so. You know, sons and daughters of God. Not just in some religious way. I mean like tripping out in the universe. I mean like, wow, talking to Moses on the transfiguration. Imagine today if what God wants to say to you is, I want you to go up this hill with me. I want you to walk up this little hill. Now, it might be a big hill for you, but, you know, this mountain. And at the top of the mountain, I'm going to do something that's going to blow your mind today. I'm going to transfigure you just like I transfigured Jesus. <gasps> really? Oh, boy. You mean I could be transfigured like Jesus? And you know what? You may not know that yet. But yes, you can.